Hello, can you go? Hello, can you go? Hello, can you go? Hello, can you go? With your logo. Hey, Pinnacle Studio peeps. How y'all doing out there? My name is Malik, and I'm back on your screen with more Pinnacle Studio love from Pinnacle Studio Pro. Dot com. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on a logo watermark, but before we get started, I want to go ahead and give a shout out to one of our subscribers, JT Haley. JT Haley makes videos on anything that's entertaining, all right? Now, he hasn't started making those videos yet, but I know he's going to get to it soon. So, do JT Haley a favor. Head on over to his channel. When he gets those videos up and rolling, start watching a few of them. If you're feeling what he's dealing, make sure you subscribe to his channel. All right, now let's get down to business. Adding a logo watermark to your videos is a great way to protect your content when you're showing it outside of YouTube. If you're showing it on YouTube, you can actually use a tool in YouTube to add your icon to the bottom right hand side of all your videos. And I'm going to have a link to the tutorial that shows you how to do that right up here. So make sure that you check that out if you want to add the logo watermark to your YouTube videos. But if you want to have a logo watermark that will show anywhere your video is displayed outside of YouTube, keep watching because I'm going to jump off into Pinnacle Studio and show you how to make it happen. All right, Pinnacle Studio peeps, here we are in Pinnacle Studio 20 Ultimate, and I'm about to show you how to get down with the logo watermark. So I'm going to show you two ways to do this. One will be with a static logo watermark, and the other way will be with a rotating logo watermark. So let me give you the 411 on the images that I'm going to be using for this. So I have some video clips down in the timeline. These are just regular uh, MOV uh, video clips. But above them, I have images. The images that I'm using are PNG images with transparent backgrounds. I like using those because then I don't have any white around my image and it looks clean. So if you have a photo editing software that allows you to create a PNG transparent image, use those for this. If not, if you just have JPEG images and they have white or black backgrounds, it's fine. You can still use those for your logo watermark. You'll just have that little background with it. So don't worry about it. Either way is fine. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to make the static logo watermark. So I have a video clip in the timeline and then I have an image above that so that the image is visible over the video clip. What I want to do first is right click on this image and go to open effects editor. Next, I'm going to go to 2D, 3D. And I'm going to select 2D editor advanced. From here, I'm gonna to go to the select preset option and I'm gonna change it from default to no preset. Then I'm gonna go down to the size section and I'm gonna make sure that my lock is orange and closed. This means that my image will maintain the aspect ratio that it has at the present time. And then I'm gonna change the size and you can go to horizontal or vertical, either one and make it the size that you want it to be based on your preferences. Next, I'm gonna go up to position. And here, I'm gonna change the horizontal and the vertical once again, based on my preferences. Now I'm gonna go down to transparency and under transparency I'm going to change this to 50 this is personal preference and just your choice you don't have to add any transparency if you don't want to now I want to save this so that I can use this effect and just easily drop it onto this image whenever I want to, or drop it onto any image whenever I want to, so I don't have to do this over and over again every time I want to add a logo watermark. I wanna make it easy. So in order to do that, I'm gonna save this effect. 
So with this little save effects composition button, I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna give it a name. And then I'm gonna click on save. Now in order to apply this to the image that I have in a timeline, I need to click on OK. Now that that's done, I need to go ahead and change the duration of the image so that it lasts throughout my entire video. Now that's really easy to do with the static logo. All you really need to do is place your cursor at the end where you see an arrow and a line. Hold down your left mouse and drag it out to the length that you want. It could be the length of the entire project, it could be the length of some clips, whatever you want. If you want a way to make it longer without having to drag it all the way across your whole project, let's say you have a really long project that's uh, 10 minutes long or something, or even longer than that, then you can right click on the image, go to adjust duration, and then type in the amount of time that you need the image to be so that it lasts throughout your whole project, and then click on OK. So now if I play this back, you'll see a beautiful watermark over the video. So that's the static logo watermark. And we'll talk about the location where the saved files are in a moment after I show you how to do the second part, which is the rotating logo watermark. So here I have another video clip, and above that I have an image. So I'm gonna left click on the image to select it. Now I'm gonna right click on it, and I'm gonna go to Open Effects Editor. I'm going to go back to 2D, 3D, and this time I'm going to go to 3D Editor CPU. So here I'm going to go to Select Preset. I'm going to change it from default to No Preset. I'm going to go down to Size. Make sure that it's locked once again so that the aspect ratio does not change. You can change the width or the height with the, whichever one you want. Now that we have the correct size, we're gonna go to position. We're gonna change the X position to whatever we prefer. And we're gonna change the Y position to whatever we prefer. Now at this point, I'm going to click on turn on off keyframing. Because we want to keyframe the rotation. So under the rotation setting, you're gonna select the rotation for how you want the video to turn. I want it to turn like from left to right. So I'm gonna to go to rotation Y. And at the first position, the playhead should be all the way to the left. We want this to be negative 360. And then I'm gonna type enter. And then I'm gonna move my playhead all the way to the end of the image. And here I'm going to type 360. And I'm gonna hit enter. And if I scrub the timeline now, you'll see that my image is rotating. So I wanna move my playhead all the way to the beginning of the image. And down here for transparency, I'm gonna change this to 50 and I'm gonna hit enter. And now I need to go to that last keyframe and come back to transparency. 
and change it to 50 as well. If I didn't do that, then what will happen is it's going to change transparency as it moves from keyframe to keyframe. So I want it to be 50 at both of these keyframes so that the transparency stays exactly the same. So now I have my rotating logo watermark set up, so I need to save it. So I'm going to click on the save button again. I'll name it. And I'll hit save. And in order to apply this to the image, I need to click on OK. And now if I play it, you'll see a rotating watermark. Now, for this one, if you drag it out like we did the other one, what will happen is it will slow down the rotation if I drag it to the right. If I drag it to the left and make the clip smaller, it will speed up the rotation. So let's see if I drag it out here. And I hit play, you'll see it's rotating slower than it did at first. Based on how quickly you want it to rotate, you need to size it, adjust the duration to your preference. Then if this is going to be a clip that you're going to apply to an entire project or to a long video clip, then you're going to really need to do a copy and paste. So you can right click on the clip, do copy. Make sure you're at the exact end of that clip and do control V. Go to the end of the clip, do control V, end of the clip and do control V. And you can do that over and over again. And then let's say you get five of them together like this. Like if it's a long project and I got five of them together, I don't have to just keep adding one at a time. I can copy five of them. So now I do copy. And then I'll go to the end, do control V, and I added all five of them. And I can keep doing that over and over and over again until I get the length of the project that I need. Now what you'll see is since we started off the rotation at negative 360 and we ended the rotation at 360, it should rotate without there being any visibility so anyone who watches it won't be able to tell even though we're going over these different clips it'll look smooth as it transitions to the next one so let's play it and see how the rotating logo looks so as you can see i've gone through i'm on a third clip now and we couldn't tell any difference in the rotation. It just looked like it was rotating smoothly over and over and over again. So the last thing I need to show you is where are these effects now that we got them all set up? So if I added another, let's say I had another image here and I wanted to add the effect to this one without copying it from any of the other ones, I could just right click on the clip, go to open effects editor, And over to the right, you should have a section called My Effects Compositions. If you click on that, here are the effects that I had before. So I just select one of them and it automatically applies it. See how I knocked it down the size and put it where it needs to be. It's good to go now. I can just click on OK. Now if I play this, it'll rotate just like the other one. Just added the effect right to it. There's another place where you can go as well. So if I open up a new tab, I go to the navigation bar under the content section and under effects, you will also find my effects compositions. If I click on that, it'll open up a new media bin or library bin with your effects compositions. And you can just drag them on top of the clips if you want to. So now you see I made 
the big clip small, it's down there in the bottom right corner, just like my logo. So I can apply these to any clips that I want to. Quick, simple, easy, logo watermark, static and rotating. Do your thing, people. Do your thing. All right, Pinnacle Studio peeps, thanks for watching this video all the way through to the end. Truly means the world to me. Now, if you want to get a shout out request like JT Haley did, go to the video description and click on the shout out request link to fill out the form. And if you want to make a tutorial request, you should also go to the video description, but this time you should click on the tutorial request form, fill that out, and then I will consider your request. Now, I need you to do something for me. Click on the thumb, the one that's pointed in the upward direction, lets people know that the content in this video is good and that they should watch it too. Also, if you want to just talk, you got any questions, you need some help with something, leave that stuff in the comment section below. And last but not least, smash that subscribe button. And after you do that, click on the bell. What that does is it makes sure that you receive notifications every time I upload content to YouTube. And that way you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.